There is one topic, one question that has been sent in more than anything else in the past several days. I'll read one question here for everyone. Okay. This was sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from James in Edmonton. John Moxley recently released a new book, <laughs> and there have been some quotes from the book doing the rounds on social media. <laughs> one in particular is what he had to say about Kevin Dunn. I, the context... I, I must say, so people have tweeted this to me a, a just a picture of one of the pages. So I haven't read the whole book or even the entire chapter or whatever, but there's some interesting comments about Kevin. Go ahead. Uh, and James gives us some context here. The content for the excerpt below is the following. When Moxley won his first WWE title, which was the U S title in 2013, he mouthed off the phrase, give me my fucking belt. <laughs> the camera feed picked up him mouthing it. Although the mics did not. Either way, when Moxley went to the back, Kevin Dunn told him what happened, and at the time, Moxley didn't realize he said that, so he apologized and said it wouldn't happen again, and Kevin Dunn told him it was all good. Then two days later, he calls him into a production truck and forces him to apologize to all the cameramen and everyone involved what? in production for saying that, What? saying that Moxley's initial apology wasn't sincere enough, so... That's where we get Moxley's take. So let me stop right there because I didn't even know the context for this until this. What do you think of that? Well, I didn't know the context either as far as I saw the page about the apology, about the actually the uh, aftermath of the apology. I didn't get the part about it being his U.S. title win and he had said fuck on. I understand going to the guys that don't mouth fuck on television because you couldn't do that then. They, they, they're all a bunch of potty mouths now. But it sounds like the little fucking ferret himself that is Kevin Dunn, that he would <laughs> apologize to the cameramen because you you said fuck and they caught it on camera. Fuck you. How about that? That's uh, just a it's, power it's trip. Ridic yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, it's like when I had to apologize to Kevin Dunn for calling him Bucky Beaver and telling him he ought to get his teeth fixed. Several days later, we got back from Canada. Vince said, you need to apologize to Kevin. I said, he started it. Well, but he's very important around here. You really need to apologize to our, So one of the, I think, two or possibly three times in my life that I apologized to anybody and didn't mean it. Um, I apologize. I've told the story. I he had Kevin come over to, Vince had Kevin come over to his house. And we sat at Vince's dining room table and Vince and Bruce fucked off somewhere to leave us alone so that I could apologize to Kevin, I'm sorry. And that's when he started crying and snurfling and talking about how all the kids had always made fun of his teeth when he was little. And, my, and he thought the best way to combat that was by being a dickhead to yes. everyone he met for the rest of his life. My, my mental thought was, get your fucking teeth fixed. You're making a fucking million dollars a year. But so he's basically a little scrawny, runty, rat-faced, fucking miserable prick that has gotten power there and does everything he can to keep sucking up to Vince and keep doing the, the Renfield thing and, and laughing at all of Vince's stuff. And, and he likes to lord over the boys and the talent because he can do those things. And there was a, t <laughs> there was one time at TNA in Orlando, one of the tapings, I'm trying to think who all with Terry Taylor was in the room. I was in the room. A couple of different WWF alumni of some description were in the room. And talking about Kevin Dunn. And right as somebody said, what a miserable, just miserable, unhappy motherfucker. Another one of the WWF alumni walked into the room and said, who are you talking about? Kevin Dunn? It was that of it was that well known, just a miserable, unhappy little hatchet headed fuck. So maybe Moxley and I do have something to bond over. Well, again, here is a quote from Moxley's new book, which I must admit I may want to read because it looks like it'll be entertaining. <laughs> but on that previous story, Moxley, from his book, it was all good. If I had gone in there and been an asshole, why didn't he just say "fuck you"? You're being an asshole. No, he let me go through the whole song and dance while being completely phony. 
pretending to accept my apology, pretending it was all good and we were friends. Then five minutes later, this little, I'll do this for YouTube, this little C-word rat <laughs> goes right to the rest of the office and says, I don't give a sufficient apology and whatever other bullshit he probably said about me, behind my back, no less. This dickless motherfucker, and it was 48 hours later. Why didn't you just call me on the phone when it happened and say, fuck you, we're all mad at you, and if you do it again, you're fired? That would have been easy to understand. Instead, I got summoned to the secret castle to meet the magical king wizard who lives in the truck and controls the universe to beg for forgiveness. <laughs> What are these stupid little games? The reality in a place like WWE is that one comment, one little seed planted by a guy in Kevin Dunn's position, can be extremely detrimental to someone's future there. That's a lot of power, and that power breeds ego. Connecticut, old rich boys club ego. I've heard all kinds of stories about the guy messing with people's careers, but this isn't that kind of book. Suffice to say, that dude is a fuckbag. <laughs> Maybe this is that kind of book. No, no. But for real, don't even get me started on, no, this is not that kind of book. Fuck Kevin Dunn. <laughs> and there's the Kevin well, Dunn chapter or section of the book. And, and he's right. And, uh, you know, again, uh, I can testify from personal experience that as soon as I apologized to Kevin Dunn, okay, we shook hands and he left and he never said another good thing that I was about me ever. When I wasn't in the room, every once in a while, he'd throw me a bone verbally when I was in the room, but I'm sure he would take that back as soon as I left. And, and I knew, and, and I enjoyed announcing, but I didn't do as much of it as I would have because of Kevin Dunn, because he was always trying to find a way to either split me and JR are up because we were too Southern or he just didn't want me on the shows because I told him that he looked like a fucking beaver and he knew I fucking hated his guts. I wasn't going to, you know, go over to the studio and hang around and fetch his coffee to get him to change his mind about me because I didn't like him. And while I liked doing the announcing, I knew that I would have been doing more of it if it had not been for him and I didn't give a shit. I wasn't going to be nice to him regardless. I was going to tolerate him as best I could because every time I tried to go out of my way to do something um, that could be considered uh, uh, professional or even halfway polite to him, I just got the same, nah. so fuck you. But, but that's what it was. He did that. That's why Kevin Kelly, because Kevin Kelly wasn't going to sit there and blow him all the time, and Kevin didn't have a you know, a nice hairdo and, and professional news experience. He just knew wrestling. If Kevin Dunn liked you, then you would get the, and he loves Lawler because the King's Teflon and he loves the sense of humor and law and Vince likes Lawler. So that means that he has to, but, um, if he didn't like you, he was going to do everything he could to not have to deal with you. It's really fucked up to do this to a young wrestler, to bring them in right when they have this moment and just try to, beat them down for no reason bringing them into the truck to apologize to all the cameramen I've, that's all about you i've never heard of that before though ever is it okay that's apologize to the crew what <laughs> unless i fell on one of them and broke their leg i don't think they're offended at me and i'm probably not going to apologize to them there was no apology to the crew if, if you had flattened the tire on the crew's bus apologize to the crew out of, again, you know, that's kind of bullshit that they do up there. And again, it's because their priorities are so skewed in the WWF since way before I showed up there in the early 90s. The TV was more important than the wrestling. Instead of shooting the TV around the wrestling, they shot the wrestling around the TV. And I told Vince when he asked me to apologize to Kevin Dunn, I said, I'm sorry to you that I was not aware because I've never been in a single promotion anywhere where the TV guys told the wrestlers what to do instead of the other way around. So I apologize for not being aware that this was an anomaly. All right. Well, on this topic, real quick, someone just sent me another recent WWE format from a TV taping. 
because these things always seem to get out. This is from the season premiere of Raw, October 25th. Are they still not writing everybody's name on the top of the format so you can know who to fucking find and kick out in the fucking parking lot when their format is found? No, at the top of the format, the only thing it says is you're watching the longest running weekly episodic television show in history. <laughs> it should say you are leaving paperwork uh, on the longest running blah, blah, blah <laughs> to be found by people and put on the Internet. You fucking idiot. I'm trying to see if there's anything really uh, interesting in here. I mean, it has obviously some of the promos, but maybe the most interesting thing is the list of talent. They have two lists, talents not working a match and talents not represented on Raw, number 1483. And then there's also a separate list of all the available talent on the roster, which is broken down by the champions and then male baby faces, male heels, baby face tag teams, heel tag teams, female baby faces, what? female heels. What? what so I'm just uh, so the whole talent roster is listed on the format for the show. According to this, this is Raw TV talent available uh, in Houston, Texas, October 25th, 2021. But is that the actual format, or is that just a talent roster? You're looking at something I'm not looking at. Uh, well, page... No, because you know what? He sent me page one and page 16, so he sent oh. me the middle of the format is in here. I can get that. Well, so the meat of the matter has been left out, but uh, that's not unusual. The way the talent rosters were done... When I was there, and I assume long before that, and probably still to this day, is you list your... Back then, there was no women's list because there was no separate women's division. Um, but you have your... Let's see if I can remember. Baby faces on the left, heels on the right, managers and referees down at the bottom, and announcers in the middle. Uh, it's all that at the top and at the very bottom. You have commentators slash ring announcers and interviewers. I don't see managers listed anywhere. Well, obviously there, there listed, aren't but, any. Yeah. I'm trying to see if uh, MVP is listed anywhere on here, but he's out right now, I guess too. So he's not, but even that, that would be an overall talent roster, not just for one particular show, but that's the roster that we worked off of to book everything. You had a list of all of the talent that you were using. Everybody was on contract. Everybody that had an individual per night deal, whatever the case, baby faces on the left, heels on the right, and also separate for announcers, managers, referees. 